Good morning. This is Gaming Perspectives with Saul and Jolene. And today we're talking about running a horror game. Yes. How to make it scary. Because it is the season. It is the season. Yes. So what's the first thing you want to talk about? Well, on your list, we or on my list, I have, uh, I guess, different genres. Mm-hmm. Uh, you talked about some Victorian mystical horror. Yeah, that was the article that I was reading that got us on this topic. Right. So right off the bat, if you're talking about horror, number one horror game in the world is probably Call of Cthulhu. <clears throat> yes, I concur. And Or anything Cthulhu-like. Anything with the name Cthulhu in it. Cause there's a ton Anything of, with the name Cthulhu is going to be horror. Because <laughs> there's a ton of games. Uh, I was talking to Jolene, and and the funny thing is that for some reason, I don't know what it is. I don't know the legality of it is of it all, but, or why it happened. But the there's no estate of what's his name Lovecraft. Lovecraft. So it entered public domain because uh, it wasn't published or whatever. Whatever it takes to keep it the rights to it. To somebody didn't happen, and so it became public uh, domain, and so anybody can use the word Cthulhu, and anybody can write about Cthulhu, and so in the world of gaming, I hate to say, uh, especially Kickstarter, there's been a lot of people who used Cthulhu and made a lot of money to for their game, no matter what game it is. There's been a couple of times when the Kickstarter wasn't fulfilled. Uh, I think there was a couple board games that went that way. But uh, anyway, but we're not talking about business and logistics. We're talking about how to make your horror game scary. I guess. Well, any kind of Cthulhu game, usually if it's Lovecraftian, right? The, right. The setting can be from the 1930s, 1920s, 30s. I think that the 20s that's the, is, 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 the, is the, what do you call it? Period. Is the, that's when, when he was writing. Right. That That is the, the standard setting of yes. the game, right? The, and it's it's um, set in the United States, right? In the, well, at least the city, right? Right. Occam. Somewhere in the East Coast. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know what city he's from or where he bases it. Well, Lovecraftian, uh, well, I don't want to call it Lovecraftian. Cthulhu is based in on the East Coast, right? Yeah, I think uh, somewhere in, is it Pennsylvania or Boston? No, Boston is not. The okay, state. you don't 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 do the East Coast, Saul, because you don't know where anything is. Please. <laughs> so that so and Cthulhu is scary because if you don't know, Cthulhu is this great evil. Horrific evil. Yes. From another dimension. There's other, but there are other um, settings or genres you could have. And and the genre is important in a horror game, right? I I have down vampires, and we talked about this. There's different kinds of vampires, right? You could play Vampire the Masquerade, and it's kind of a horror setting, right? Because they're vampires. Yeah, you play vampires. But it's very um, intrigue-based. Right. I don't think I don't think vampire masquerade is supposed to make you feel scared. Yeah. I don't know. But if you talk about other vampires like Dresden vampires, you should be very scared, right? I guess it depends on what relations you have with that vampire, right? If you're trying yeah. to kill him, it might be a little scary. Um and then I have modern horror, which I put down supernatural, Dresden files, dark conspiracy. Yeah. That would be a totally different kind of of genre for a horror game than Cthulhu, right? Correct. Because Cthulhu, you're most likely going to go insane. Yes. Well, the thing is, is that I've, from what I've heard from the few friends that I have that play Cthulhu quite a bit, they say the monsters that you beat, come across in those games are not defeated by brawn and bullets because they're just too powerful. Right, just the fact of looking at them causes you to lose sanity points, which is very important because statistic in Call of Cthulhu, after you go below a certain threshold, you're clinically insane, and you basically you end up in an asylum. Yeah, your character is now an NPC, roll up another character. So, and that happens quite often in those games because everything you come across, any part of Eldritch horror you, you see or hear about or read will cost you or may cost you sanity points depending on the gm 
and how mean they want to be to you. So <laughs> That's Saul's idea, how mean they want to be to you. <laughs> so it's very easy to lose sanity and depending on who's running the game. And and that's that's the slow spiral into uh into insanity that causes you to lose your character and make another one. So that in itself is a scary proposition. It's always over your head as a player that the more you act, the more you delve into this stuff, the higher chances of you losing sanity and losing your character. So that's a fine line. So when you're playing Call of Cthulhu, you're not trying to, your your ultimate goal shouldn't be to kill the monsters. It should just be to figure out what the situation is and try to get out of it alive, right? You're trying to defeat the monster, I guess, in a certain way, but you, for the most part, it is, you're not going to be able to blow it up. And it's not really a, if you're going to defeat it, you're going to need somebody that has a spell to do or it. Or a certain artifact. Or an that, artifact. You know. It's it's more of an investigative game. It's not a yes. a monster hunter game. Correct. Correct. That's exactly, you're, you're right. Which is what which is what Supernatural is, or literally, that's what it is. Supernatural as in the TV show yeah. Supernatural. Yeah. Yes. And the genre, right? With the, what's Sean and Dean Winchester? Sam. Sam and Dean Winchester. Yeah. yeah. And Dark Conspiracy is that kind of thing. Dark Conspiracy is a kind of in between, right? Because in Call of Cthulhu, not everybody sees the evil stuff, right? Right. They just pass it by. <laughs> or it doesn't become it visible doesn't, to them, it's right? It's not really visible to them. It's the same thing in Dark Conspiracy, right? Not everybody sees the what's going on. Right. I think most, most horror games of that ilk where you are chasing evil, killing, hunting and killing it, you're part of a special group of people who have either it had some sort of supernatural experience or other world experience that exposes you to that world and now you cannot unsee what you just saw. Right. And now and now you're once you've been exposed, you can see that world and you can't unsee it. So what happens is either you ignore it as much as you can or you decide to stand up and fight. And that's that dark conspiracy that's supernatural. And even Call Cthulhu, right? Because most of the world is oblivious to what's going on. Yeah. Remember, uh, <laughs> remember this is a funny story. I know I've said it before, but it's been a long time. We were playing, I was running Supernatural with my friends. And uh, at one point, the, the players go, let's call the police, right? <laughs> and then... And then uh, Jolene was who was uh, I think that was the first time you really got fed up with my group, <laughs> and you're like get out of the way I'm gonna play because you're like what she, she's laying on the couch it's, uh, and right right here my right where I'm podcasting from and uh, recording and she goes you can't call the police you guys are criminals you guys have criminal backgrounds some of them some of the player characters and they're like what and then the, my players are, and my my friends are going what are you talking about because they had never seen the show. <laughs> And and I'm like, and I was like, uh, and then she goes, give me a character, Saul. So I give her a character. She sits down, and we start playing Supernatural, and then the cops were not called. Right? <laughs> oh, so that's if not how you kill it. Uh, that's not how the, you play the game. I think it's very interesting that that because they had never seen the show, they were completely uh, clueless as to the way the show went or what the show was about, right? Uh, the idea of calling the cops because uh, a werewolf was killing little kids or something or, or, or kidnapping defense, people. After after that game, Don went home and yes. loved Supernatural. Yes. He went out and binge watched it. He goes, it's a great show. He goes, now I know what Jolene was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and she, no, I never said she were wrong. I just thought it was funny that like you're like, you were hearing what was going on and then finally you decided to. What are they doing? Yes. And so, so that in and of itself, so if you're, that's a different kind of horror. So if you want to play a horror game where you're the monster hunter, and even um, the Vampire Masquerade, they have a game called Hunters, right? Hunt, yeah. Hunter or Hunters. The hunt, hunters, right. And they are the vampire hunters. The regular people that, go after vampires, which it's they're exactly clearly, a very, clearly unmatched. 
<laughs> which just seems like a very silly thing to do. Very, very dangerous but thing to do. It's like in, when whenever Saul runs his Dresden game, and he goes, "Well, in in the Dresden game, the RPG, it's not they're not as powerful as they are in the books." But everybody who plays the game has probably read the books. Yes, going, I want. I don't want to have anything. Yeah, to do I remember. With I remember. I, I included them for flavor yeah. in, in one game that I played at DungeonCon years ago. And then as soon as I mentioned, well, as soon as they figured out vampires were involved, like two guys goes, oh, wait, we're out. We're not going there. And then he goes, they kick ass. There's no way we can do anything about them. And then I'm we're like, walking okay. The other way. I go, well, the vampires in the RPG are not as powerful as they are in the show or in the movie. I mean, in the books. books. And it was a show yeah. for a brief period of time. And uh, I'm like, and they're like, oh, okay. And they still couldn't do it. And they still were very wary about the whole situation so so those those are two different two kinds of genres right and those will make excellent games you just have to figure out what the what's the scariness is going to be right but then there's a couple others that i have down for genres that i think are um are really good like um alien yes is a sci-fi horror game and it's probably the best sci-fi horror game because they're aliens and you're gonna die. I think the the really cool part about that is because Alien is such a well known franchise, and and there's only been like four movies, and uh, some of them totally sucked. Well, I guess there's more there's now. There's more movies now. Now yeah, they've done expanded the universe, but everybody knows what Alien is about. It's about some parasitic uh, alien that lays eggs inside of you, and then they blow up out of your chest, right? So whether you've seen the movie, read the comic books, or whatever, most people above the age of 20 probably know what Alien is about. And that's like already they're paranoid, right? Yeah. No matter what. So in this one game that I ran, I think I ran, it's called The Chariot of the God. And uh, they come across a derelict or a, a floating ship that they find out there. And immediately everybody's like, I don't want to go on a ship. <laughs> Right, and like, and they're like, you know, and they're all broke, right? In this game, right? They all need money. There's all, they all have reasons to want more money, uh, either because uh, some one of their their kid, one of the not their kids, but one of their brothers is dying of some disease that needs money and needs special medicine. There's a reason you're or, out there working for that company, right? Or the captain needs more money to pay off his ship, or it's going to get impounded, or or one of them's a drug addict, and one of them's a drug addict, and all these other things, right? So there's a reason for them to go and get the ship because if claim it as salvage, they claim 10% or 1% of the ship's and worth. And that's what they told them to do. And that's a ton of money yeah. in that world, right? So there's that drive. But let me tell you, they were so expecting the, the alien from Alien the movie and aliens to come out and attack them, they were super paranoid. Automatically, the tension was set to like eleven, right? Because like they they were like, okay, the captain goes, well, we got to go over there and figure out what to claim this to salvage. We got to land on that ship and see what's going on. And that, and when you're doing a horror game, that's what you want, right? You want so so the genre is important. And when you come across a genre like Alien, where everybody knows that it's a horror game in space. It does ratchet up the tension, as Saul yes. says. It makes it, you're like, you're always looking around the corner. Where am I going to get attacked? You know that there's something there that can kill you instantly, right? At least you believe there is. Yeah. So that makes it, that makes the, that's the thrill of playing the horror game. Yes. And like I said, Alien is like a perfectly, perfectly set up game for you, right? To to experience horror. Because usually in a confined space, mm -hmm. a spaceship, mm -hmm. uh, even if it's a big spaceship. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, right? There's nowhere you can run, theoretically. And and so that sets up that that phobia, that, that fear of the unknown, the fear of confined spaces, the fear of being infected by this thing. And usually and, those ships are pretty big, right? Well, it depends on that. The ship you're or, the ship that you are in is just like a as a smaller ship. A spit, yeah. And you you come across what is a research ship, which is much bigger than yours. So in that game, I mean, I ran it three times, and each time, everybody did different things. Uh, and everybody's uh, idea of what Alien is, right, attributed to the way that the games went, right, and also made them just scared, right? They, they didn't, and it made now I don't know if they were scared, but they were being extremely cautious about everything they did, 
and they were on a time limit, right? Because they could only be on that ship for a, a limited period of time. Okay. So the slower they went, the more time it took. So then they would have to come back to the, their back to their own ship and resupply oxygen and stuff. So and as you know, in a in Alien, if you haven't played it or watched the movie. Bad things are going to happen, no matter what you do, mm-hmm. and it, it doesn't. It doesn't mean that there's a little alien running at you. It just means that all of a sudden the air isn't circulating anymore. Everybody has to put on their suits. There's some kind of. I uh, have to tell them that they already <laughs> put on their suits. <laughs> there's going to be a something's going to blow out in the engine room. Something's going to start on fire. Different kinds of things are going to happen, right? And that's part of the horror of it. Trying to right. And then there's always the the chance that you're going to run into an alien. In that particular scenario that Saul ran, it wasn't a big alien. They were the little, the little guys coming at you. At the beginning. Yeah. At the beginning. At the beginning. Yeah. yeah, it was a totally different type of alien. So Yeah. So the, the, and I think that was funny is that they expect this alien there's a certain type of alien and when it wasn't that, it was like you would think they would be sigh of relief, but then they didn't know <laughs> what this thing how it how it spread how it was gonna kill you right so it was very the, everybody was paranoid and each the of the three sessions i ran each session had its own level of paranoia so the other genre that i kind of wanted to talk about was the zombie genre yes. which i guess i haven't played any zombie games and uh, zombies aren't my thing but i guess it would be a monster hunter game to me right you're gonna have to figure out how not to get catch whatever these zombies have and how to kill them in my opinion, because that would be the horror of it, that you would catch the disease and become a zombie. Well, I think you're right. I think that most games will probably go along those lines. In the TV show, the zombies are just, what is it? They're just setting. The real story is the interaction between humans, right? Who are desperately trying to survive, desperately trying to gather as much resources to live. And then there's always a threat of the, of the zombies around the corner. Or not too far away, and I think, I think that's probably where the transition goes different from RP from the TV shows or what people think of zombies to the to RPG. Most games seem like they're monster killing. They're going out, killing monster, killing the zombies, and then foraging for stuff. Where I don't think there's a lot of like internal angst between the. The characters. characters where that's where like the walking dead that's the the walking dead was all about these people having to live together or deal with each other and even though if they didn't like each other they were dependent on each other to survive i don't know how well that translates to a role-playing game unless you're really into that internal drama type stuff and i am not <laughs> right i am not that type of player or gm I'm the type of GM that just wants to have a good time. I know there's people out there who sort of use a role-playing game as a therapeutic tool. I've heard of that happening. I don't know if that's necessarily what you people should be doing. Uh, but uh, anybody, you know, you're all entitled to do what you want. I'm there to have a good time to just like going to see a movie. So I like fun things and if i were to to play in a role-playing game about zombies i'd be in the like you said just out there surviving killing uh zombies and and figure out a way to survive to the next day or the next week or you know finding the cash of weapons food and stuff like that not this like internal struggle with my fellow players talking about whatever <laughs> talking about the, the the will to live in this terrible environment anyway so there's a few games out there about zombies, right? The RPGs. Uh, the one that first came to mind uh, is, I think it is, I forget, the, oh man, I can't believe I forgot the name of the company, but it's called uh, Something Apocalypse, right? There's a f- series of four four books, I think, and they each have a different kind of ap- apocalypse. There's a robot apocalypse, the gods come back, alien, and then zombie apocalypse. And the weird thing about this game is that you play yourself, right? There's stats and there's stuff. So what happens is you get a, go around get around with your friends, and you create yourself right <laughs> <laughs> in the role playing game using the stats. Most people, are supposedly, gonna, are going to up their stats. Supposedly, that's what happens, right? I've never done it, but people who have played in this kind of game where you're supposed to make yourself in a and as a as a role playing character as, as a character in a role playing game, 
they overestimate their their strength, their their strengths, oh, yeah, and underestimate their weaknesses, yeah. right? So like, and then I think it's funny that in this game, what happens is when you write out your stats and then you show them to everybody else, and then everybody else votes on whether you got your character right or not. <laughs> If that's a true representation, that's what somebody goes, oh, I have a strength 15. And they're like, and then everybody goes, uh, uh you, you can't know, lift that couch anymore. What yeah, are you talking what are you about? Talking about? <laughs> you know, and all these, oh, you're not that good looking or you're not that charismatic and stuff like that. I mean, those, there's a serious ego blows to your character, right? Or to yourself. So you definitely want to just play amongst friends or people you don't know at all. <laughs> <laughs> people you don't know. So that's the interesting aspect of the game. And then I, I guess, depending on how greedy you want, you play your game like uh, from your own home, right? You start the game in your own home. This happens, and you guys all have to get together. And you you can only grab stuff that you own in your own home, right? So if, sounds you know, like a horrible game. <laughs> well, you know we're not survivalists, so we don't own any <laughs> AR-15s and in uh, what is it, machine guns or, or anti-aircraft missiles. So, but we know where to get them. Yeah, so there you go to yeah. I mean, the stuff like that happens. So I think it's an interesting game. I've never played it. I actually own the books. Uh, I'm not even sure if they're in print anymore. There's another game called Red Markets, which deals with the economy of a zombie apocalypse, where you are in the bottom rung of society, and you literally have to go out and hunt for stuff that's worth stuff to bring it back and sell it. And each time you go out, uh, you know, there's a more risk of getting infected by zombies and you have to battle zombies. And this is, it's this economic game or push your element kind of game where you, do you want to go out again to be able to afford medicine for your kid or something like that? I mean, they make it really punishing if you don't do what you got to do. So that doesn't sound like fun. Yeah, it's and it's a huge book. I I remember seeing it at at the at the bookstore, and it's like five, six, seven hundred page book. I mean, it's a beefy tome, and I'm thinking, what the hell's in that thing? I didn't even look into it. It's, well, a lot of people are into zombies, though. That's a genre yes, that people zo- like. Zombies have been good in for about twenty years. Yeah. I think it's starting to wane. I think. Um, I think. I don't know. I saw you playing Left 4 Dead last night on the computer. So well, that's a yeah, that's true. But like uh, the shows, uh, I think uh, what, they're still on. What is it? The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead. I think they're all finished. No, there. I I saw the Fear of the Walking Dead is supposed to end this year. Uh, I don't know if there's any new Walking Dead series coming up. Hulu, ha- Hulu, and uh, <laughs> one of the other ones I have have it all over the place. So, so there you go. Yeah, there was even some low budget series uh, where it talked about it, it was a uh, a zombie apocalypse. I think it was World War, not World War Z, is the Z apocalypse or something like that. And then, and I'm like, wow, this is kind of like interesting. But then, like I said, I'm not much into zombies, so so that's that's a genre you could use. Yes, and then Saul and I played a game. Morgan ran it. It was it was these killer clowns. The cl- <laughs> and. And I hate clowns, okay? She hates clowns. So. Almost phobic. Almost. Yeah, except they they scare me like into, I want to hit them, right? Like get them away from me. So so it was a, it was a very, um, it was it was fine, except that I just wanted to kill all the clowns in the Which game. Which was good because they were evil. Yes. So you can go with something like that. And I, I'm, I'm sure that that was a. a a written adventure somewhere. Yes. I don't even remember what game we were, what game it was. It's called Cthulhu, I think. Oh, was it a Call of Cthulhu? I don't remember. It's called Cthulhu Rules. Yeah. But it was, it was, it was a good game once you got, it, yeah, it once was. You got past the killer clown part? Yeah. But that's like a total horror game for me, right? Anything with clowns in it. It doesn't even have to be a horror game. If just a clown, Saul can attest to this. It, it freaks me out and I find that horror, right? Yeah, I I don't know. Maybe he did he maybe he came up with it because he found a a clown motel, remember? Yes. Which is which right next to it is a cemetery. Yes. And I think he actually made that adventure. Uh, it was a it was a it was a really good adventure. And he had all these pictures. And oh, it was horrible. <laughs> So, I mean, he asked you if you were okay playing that game cuz he knew about your clown phobia. <laughs> I don't know if it's clown phobia or in cloud clown enragement because you just get nasty. I don't like clowns. Yes, so I think you could you could if 
depending on people's amount of phobia, like if they if people cannot uh, just function yeah. with stuff like that, then I wouldn't use it. Like my 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 sister is afraid of cats, right? So they and she describes it they're disgusting, right? In in Spanish, and I'm like. They're disgusting. I've never, I've never had a phobia. Like I don't like spiders. Okay, I don't know who people like spiders. I I'm creeped out by snakes, but spiders I don't like. Uh, I think there's a natural aversion to spiders, but I don't <laughs> so think the ones we have. I don't think they're disgusting. I mean, I, I may well maybe uh, the one from the Lord of the Rings was disgusting. <sighs> it was slaver, slavertating all over the Frodo and stuff. But I wouldn't use that term. But because she's so phobic, that is why. Uh, she uses those terms, right? And I think if you're if somebody is like that, I would not use like giant killer cats in that campaign to 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 scare the crap out of her. She might just like walk out of the game. And you should, if you're gonna run it with evil clowns, you should make sure nobody at the table doesn't like clowns because clowns kind of scare people sometimes. Some people really right. And I think, I don't know. I I've never had that uh, situation. Well. I didn't, when I was growing up, I never really dealt too much about that or cared too much about clowns. But slowly but surely, because of Jolene's uh, aversion to them, I've grown to not to like clowns myself. Not that I'm like scared of them, but I'm like, yeah, they are kind of grotesque with the big old red smile and stuff like that. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty unnerving. So, so when you are playing a horror game, you should make sure that whatever genre it is, people don't like. It's not the people that you're playing with. Make sure they actually are good with playing that. Yeah, it doesn't make them catatonic. Yeah. <laughs> get it catatonic. Um, sorry, I got lost in the clowns. So one of the other genres that we kind of talked about, but you can steampunk, Victoriana, those kind of, and l- liminal, the urban fantasy uh, or yes. urban horror. It can be urban fantasy, but usually you're having to get rid of some kind of horror right or something not usually liminal can go either way you could just be trying to keep the fairies from invading in, yeah or <laughs> yeah or taking the, people and taking <laughs> them into their realm right yeah. yeah which could uh, be a horror and a liminal liminal. yeah liminal is very interesting because it uh i really like the way uh paul mentioned herself that game is super easy to play and his case notes which are mm-hmm. basic adventures they're always based on some sort of uh the ones he's legend. made, yeah, some legend, some legend from England. So at one point, uh, I was describing the the evil denizen of that was doing this, and M- M- Morgan had knew about it. He goes, "It's a red hat," yeah, and I'm like, "Yeah, they kept mentioning it's a red hat in the adventure, but I didn't have any experience from. I mean, I'm not English. I'm, you know, mainly Mexican, so I have no idea what a red hat is or that that." That legend of from coming from from uh, England about this red hat, which is a is a is a is a horrible thing to run into, right? I guess yeah, it's a big brooding like uh, goblin like yeah. thing that kills people, hits them over the head with uh, with a club, and then takes you away. But you know, but if you were to mention like the Yorona, right, the, the crying yeah. woman, in to me, I knew it, I would know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about, and you know, I'll probably get chills. Yes. <laughs> Chills on my just arm. Just thinking about it. Just thinking about it because I I, I grew up with that legend, right? Yeah. Uh, the chupacabra it was something I never heard about until much was uh, much older. But el cucuy, uh. which is like the boogeyman, literally, yeah. uh, is something that I have heard about. And you know, they, they were not my parents would never say that the boogeyman is going to get you, but my friends would say that. Yeah. So I got it. I also have a hefty uh, not what is it. Not fear, but I, I get anxious in pitch darkness. <laughs> when I, I used to, I mean, when I was a kid. I used to go out in my backyard, and it, because we lived in the non-incorporated part of the city, there was no city lights. So when I went into my backyard, I was like, I can't see anything out here. <laughs> and you know, we it was a huge backyard. It wasn't like a normal backyard. But uh, I would always, how it was where I grew up. I would always rush when I was, you know, my dad would go, go get something, blah, blah, blah. And so I'd go get it. And then I'd come rushing back into the house because there's light. <laughs> and then like I, we, one time we stayed at my sister's, well, my, my brother was staying somewhere and we babysat his daughter. And he was staying at my sister's place out in the boonies. And uh, it's windows all the way around, uh, practically. And it's on the top of a hill in the middle of nowhere. And it was like pitch dark out there i'm like 
this is unnerving. I didn't like it either. <laughs> and I was inside. And that was just real life. So imagine a horror game in that setting. Yes. Yeah, imagine a horror setting, something creepy out there, breaking wood and, and stomping around. And you're like, no, don't know what it is. So if you're going to run a horror game, I think two of the best kinds are the the mystery, right? You have to figure out what this thing is and what it's doing. And depending on the genre you're playing, if you're playing Call of Cthulhu, try not to get go insane, trying to help the people. Or if you are playing Supernatural, you figure out what it is, it's probably pretty scary and you're going to go kill it. And then learning how to kill it because right. not everything can be killed by natural means, <clears throat> right? You got to have, uh, I don't know, you need silver, an amulet, or you, or you have to have a spear of salts, you know, salts or, or spices, fire. <laughs> incense. Fire works on lots of things. Aliens, <laughs> you want the flame flo- flame thrower, or <clears throat> supernatural fire and salt kill a lot of things. <laughs> so horror games, there's certain things you're you're gonna do right those are the kind of genres and i think those two different two different kinds the the mystery trying to figure out what it is and not knowing what it is right or the well and it could still be part of a mystery right once you figure out what it is you either have to kill it or try to keep it from make a deal with it to make it go away i mean yeah figure out what it wants and if it's doable to give it to that thing or whatever or not or on the other side figure out how to kill it yeah so there's some things that you can do to make the 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 add horror to the situation and we were talking about being creepy Mm -hmm. adding creepy things that are unsettling like clowns well i mean it could be something like that and i i don't know uh put the characters in a dark place or where they can't see or in a confined space, anything that that inhibits the, the characters from using all their senses. And we were talking about this for, like, Conan is a good example of, uh, it's it's not really a horror game, right? But a lot of... There's the, horror aspects to it. <clears throat> a lot of the monsters. monsters are, if you read Robert E. Howard, yes. A lot of the monsters, like he always says, they're the children of Set, or yes. and they're they're like they're like crazy things like basilisks or creepy worms that are going to come in and take you over. They are creepy, right? And the way that he describes them in the books is, and the one that I was talking to Saul about was the I think it's the God in the Basket. Yes, and this there's this basket in this room, and everybody in the house is like dead when they find it and it's empty and throughout the description is you and it's like a was it a basilisk i think i think that's what he used the term at the end but it was basically a giant snake yeah but he never told you it was a giant snake right and he 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 he, he used terms like the shadowy figure going up the wall or you saw this you know you saw it out of the corner of your eye and it was just movements and and shadows and stuff and and the good thing is he didn't describe it in any way that would make you think it was a snake right right because he like Jolene was a slithering I go I think he purposely didn't use those type of words so you as the reader you didn't know what it was just like Conan and the characters in the book and it wasn't until it was revealed what it was you're like oh my god it's just a giant snake but it was a humongous snake right like a big old huge anaconda but I think it was a viper but it was a representation of a god right Right. and so that made it even it was a child to set yeah it was it was more than just an animal it was some supernatural thing and and of course you know conan goes in and kills it because right that's what conan does right <clears throat> which is a good horror thing right you you discover what it is and you either there's only a certain number of things you can do and <laughs> killing it is probably the best one in that situation otherwise it's gonna kill you right and then there's what the the the, the elephant in the tower or something like that yeah and that had nothing to do with like uh that was just like a very strange supernatural being. Yeah. Right. And it wasn't even necessarily that thing wasn't evil. I don't think it, it was. It was just odd. <laughs> yes. But anyway, so I think uh, so using just, nondescriptive terms yeah. that describe the thing, but describe what it's like. Kind of like, I don't know how to explain it. So I think that's the best way to to add that, that sense of creepiness. Another way you could do is grow task or gross stuff yeah. right which depending on your, your group it mileage may vary some people say 
I think the the one of the ideas for that one would be like weird war, right? You're World War Two soldiers, and you they they tell you, well, we came across this this body that was torn up. Yes, and and you have to figure out what it is, right? And throughout your investigations, your people are talking about like they saw it looked like a giant wolf or something. Yes, yes, and you're going. Okay, and everybody at the table is going, "Oh my God, it's a werewolf or something like yeah, that." Yeah. Right, and so so you know what you're going to have to do, but you're got to figure out how to how to do it, how to kill it, or right. whatever to keep it from killing all the the townspeople or whatever. Yes, that's a good good one. Yeah, uh, another one is suspense. Keep the characters off their feet as to w- what might happen next, and sometimes it could be something like really mundane, and like, but because they're there are such a heightened attention to stuff. It might be something innocent, and they're not. You, it may be something like, "Oh, the the paper boy comes in and and, and says, oh, sorry, sir, I I got your newspaper wet last time, but so here it is.'" And you're like, "Is that really a little paper boy?" Especially in the middle of a mystery or a horror game. I don't know where it comes some innocent kid or some innocent person who has no clue as to what's going on, and they seem unscathed about like people are dying left and right. But here's this person who's like oh i came to deliver a pizza and like what about the the werewolves outside and like what (laughs) you know what i mean and so then they're suspicious about that and so there's that suspense like uh well this is this guy is this really a person or is it some something else does this thing as represented or is it something else the one that i like that Saul talks that Saul has on his list is put a traitor in the mitt (laughs) and i think that that comes from alien myself the company man the company man is there and always be suspicious of the company man because you know that he is the one that is going to try to get that alien back to the space station to to wherever right right but in, in call of cthulhu sometimes um you hit a certain point where suddenly you become possessed or something. So. Well, that's next on my list. It's infection and possession. Yeah. Where that's a fear. You know, Alien, your fear of being infected. Yes. Right? In Call of Cthulhu, uh, especially when you're dealing with ghosts, you worry about being possessed. And sometimes you don't even know that possibility exists. Exists, right. Right. Well, and when you talk about Alien and the company man, I mean... We played a game where Bay was the company man, and I kept telling everybody not to trust him, and nobody would listen to me because they all had their own agendas. And well, then, you you're being paranoid. And then he had the the <laughs> synthetic guy go after me and try to kill me, which I had nothing to do with that. But. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is one that I usually don't do at conventions, and I'm not a killer GM. But death should be possible. I know one of my friends uh, is famous for saying death is on the table and uh, and to scare away people, I guess. He usually tries to make it so the players don't believe that they're invincible and they could go charging into the action, guns blazing, and that they're going to live. Well, that's because he runs a lot of Call of Cthulhu. Yes. And when you sit down at a, at a convention, some people don't know that you can't go in and swinging at the monsters, right? That, that'll that probably end badly for you. Yes, and he, he uses, the, he, uses uh, he was a D&D player as a uh, derogative uh, of uh, play style because he finds that people who play D&D tend to be very proactive and action orientated where Call of Cthulhu is a more subtle game. So I think he's just trying to make sure that people understand that this is not a D&D game. This is not an action, heroic action movie type story. And that's one side. Well, that that's one kind of a horror game, right? Because the horror is so horrible, you're not going to win. Yes. So you got to figure yes. out how to how to deal with it and stay sane. Right. Versus the the there's there's the killer clowns. Let's go kill them. <laughs> Kind of yeah. game, right? I think I think a big difference is in in all throughout all these games is how badass are your PCs versus the monsters? Yeah, right. In Call of Cthulhu, no, no, you're just normal people way over your heads. In Dark Conspiracy, Supernatural, you're, right. you're very, you are the people that take care of and get rid of these right. monsters. You're very capable people. You're trained in in things that would help you. Uh, a, 
do your task. So even if the crying woman in white on that bridge scares the hell out of you, you know, you got to, can I say that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you have to go and take care of this. Oh, hell, double, <laughs> H, e, double hockey sticks. Yes, you can say hell. So I think uh, if you if you know your group, uh, most likely you will if you're playing a, a horror game with them. Uh, push on those things that they don't like. Uh, clowns for people who dislike clowns. I'm not talking about full on phobias, uh, but uh, stay away from those topics. Definitely ask them if you yes. know they don't like clowns. Ask them if it's okay because right. if I wouldn't have known that if Morgan hadn't said, well, the name of the game was Killer, what was something about clowns in a motel, yes. and I was like, okay, I can do it. <laughs> and you did fine. You did fine. I so, may have been a little violent, but I did fine. <laughs> Uh, have fun out there. Uh, happy Halloween. Yeah. It's and coming up soon. Uh, there's all kinds of adventures out there, uh, specifically for Halloween. One shots. Uh, from lots of horror. Lots of horror. Lots of different games from D&D to Traveler to... Anything you can anything think of. Anything you can think of. Uh, if you go to Drive through RPG, I'm sure there's 101 adventures and it's always fun to do a, a one shot like that for yes. for your group yeah so there you go good luck this is gaming perspectives with Saul and Jolene and you have a good day